Taste and see, taste and see.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We have come rejoicing into the house of the Lord for this celebration. Dear brothers and sisters, we now stand with Paul and Christina on the day they intend to form a home of their own. For them, this is a moment of unique importance. So let us support them with our affection, with our friendship, and with our prayer as their brothers and sisters. Let us listen attentively with them to the word that God speaks to them today. Then, with Holy Church, let us humbly pray to God the Father, through Christ our Lord, for this couple, his servants, that he lovingly accept them, bless them, and make them always one. to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your Let us pray. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness uphold that which you have established for the increase of the human race, so that the union you have created may be kept safe by your assistance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air. And he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all wild animals. But none proved to be the suitable partner 
for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. This one, at last, is bone of my bones. When he brought her to the man, the man said, and flesh of my flesh, this one shall be called woman. For out of her name, for out of her man, this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one body. The word of the Lord. shall be like a fruitful vine in the midst of your home. Your children flourish like olive plants, rejoicing at your table. Blessed are those who love you, happy those who follow you. Blessed are those who seek you, O God. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, If I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. It is not pompous. It is not inflated. It is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. 
It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John. There was a wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it, and when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine, without knowing where it came from, although the servants who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves good wine first, and when the people have drunk freely, an inferior one. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs in Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Lord. Please be seated. There was an experiment that was done called the still-faced experiment. The still-faced experiment, you can view it online. Uh, the experiment, I'd encourage you to do so, is where this, there's a mother and her child in a room. And they're engaging in, in conversation and uh, they're, um, they're playing with one another. And then at some point in this moment between the mother and the child, the mother just puts on a still face. And you can see at first the child goes on as normal, but then he recognizes that something's wrong. There's no longer engagement. Something's wrong, and so the child does whatever it can to get the mother's attention back. At first, um, it does all its abilities, you know, it babbles or it points around the room or it throws things. And then it starts to cry. 
starts to cry for its mother's attention, but the mother still remains still face. And then finally in the experiment, the most shocking and kind of horrific moment, the child becomes as still as the mother. I think this demonstrates how us as human beings, how we fight for relationship, we'll fight for love and for that to be in our lives. But very early on, we fight for love. And no one needs to explain this to us. You know, th think about the first love story you ever heard. I think for me, maybe it was Cinderella. But honestly, it was, pro it was probably Mario. It was probably playing Mario. That was the first love story I've ever heard. And nobody needed to explain to me as a kid that it was... It was good for Mario to keep fighting, to keep going level after level to try and rescue the princess. No one needed to explain that to me. It makes sense for us as human beings that we will fight for love. And when it's out of our lives, when we no longer have meaningful relationships, we go still face. It's as if we're dead. And so we fight for love. We celebrate it when we see it. We encourage it in others. And when we see its victory, we stand in thanksgiving. And that's a part of what we've come to do today. To celebrate it when we see it. And then hopefully you continue to encourage this couple onwards in their marriage to help aid their love's growth and hopefully 50 years from now we can stand back in thanksgiving as we see love's victory in their lives we all desire that to see the victory of love not only in our own lives but in the lives of those around us and so fight for love for this relationship but that doesn't explain everything that doesn't explain everything because you could do that in a wide variety of places that aren't this church. There's many other ways to get married, but today you're asking for God to bless your marriage in a special way today to make it the sacrament of marriage. So if you just wanted a simple relationship with human love, that doesn't explain why we're here. We're here because you're asking for God to bless your marriage so that you don't just love each other with a human love, but with Christ's own love, the love that made the world, the love that is so powerful that it redeemed humankind, that it went through becoming man, went through the passion, death, and resurrection. That love that we call charity is the love with which you want to love each other and want to love those around you. That's the sacrament of marriage, that you become a sign of, of Jesus Christ in the world, so that they see in you a love that they don't see anywhere else. That love of Jesus Christ that we hear about in the Gospels. That's why we're here. That's why we're here, and that's why we're asking for God's blessing, because we can't love with that kind of love, with Christ's own love, without Christ. It's only through him that we have charity. And so that, this means that not only do you have to fight for this relationship and fight for love, but you have to fight for your love, not just of each other, but of your love for Jesus Christ and for his presence within your marriage, because you can't do it without him. And you're starting this, this journey with him, this adventure into the sacrament of marriage. Here, that fight continues beyond this moment. And I know that if you do this, and you continue to fight for one another, and nobody needs to tell us or explain to us how it is good to fight for love, how it is worthy to give our lives for something that we hold higher than ourselves, to sacrifice our love for this adventure. If you continue to do this, and if you continue to fight for Christ to be a, in your marriage and a part of your marriage, and for your love of him and for your God, 
that I'm sure that he will continue to bless your relationship so that your love for each other may become that charity that Christ himself showed us and that that charity might not just impact you or your family or your relatives, but might impact the people that you encounter, the strangers, your communities. But I'm sure that if you fight to keep him in your marriage and fight for your relationship with God and your relationship with each other, I'm sure that you'll see love's victory in your life. Please stand. Dearly beloved, you have come together in the house of the church so that in the presence of the church as minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you through a special sacrament. He enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated in holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so, in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Paul and Christina, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? I have. have. Are you prepared, as you follow the path of marriage, to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? I I am. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? Since it is your intention to enter into the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. I, Paul, Paul, take you, Christina, Christina, to be my wife. wife. I promise to be faithful to you you, in good times and in bad, in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, to love you and to honor you, to love you and to honor you, all the days of my life, all the days of my life. I, Christina, I, Christina, take you, Paul, take you, Paul, to be my husband, to be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you, I promise to be faithful to you, in good times and in bad, in good times and bad, in sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you. To love you and to honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. You should stay here. May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Christina, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity in the name of the Father and the Son 
and the Holy Spirit. Paul, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please stand. Dear brothers and sisters, as we call to mind the special gift of grace and charity by which God has been pleased to crown and consecrate the love of our sister Christina and of our brother Paul, let us commend them to the Lord. After each Intercession will respond, Lord, hear our prayer. 
that he will bless their covenant as he chose to sanctify the marriage at Cana in Galilee. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that they be granted perfect and fruitful love, peace and strength, and that they bear faithful witness to the name of Christian. Let us pray to the Lord. That the Christian people may grow in virtue day by day, and that all who are burdened by any need may receive the help of grace from above, let us pray to the Lord. That the grace of the sacrament be, will be renewed by the Holy Spirit and all married persons here present, let us pray to the Lord. Graciously pour out upon this husband and wife, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and make them one heart and one soul, so that nothing whatever may divide those you have joined, and no harm come to those you have filled with your blessing. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we prepare the altar. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand. For the praise and glory of his name. For our good and the good of us all. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offering made on the occasion of this sealing of the sacred bond of marriage. And just as your goodness is its origin, may your providence guide its course. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have forged the covenant of marriage as a sweet yoke of harmony and an unbreakable bond of peace, so that the chaste and fruitful love of holy matrimony may serve to increase the children you adopt as your own. And by your providence and grace, O Lord, 
you accomplish the wonder of this twofold design. That while the birth of children brings beauty to the world, their rebirth and baptism gives increase to the church. Through Christ our Lord, through him, with angels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as with Oden we acclaim. Unable, be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Be mindful also, Lord, of Paul and Christina, whom you have brought to their wedding day, so that by your grace they may abide in mutual love and in peace. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
please stand. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to the Lord that on these his servants now married in Christ, he may mercifully pour out the blessing of his grace and make of one heart and love by the sacrament of Christ's body and blood those he has joined by a holy covenant. Let us pray for a moment for Paul and Christina in silence. Paul and Christina, please kneel. O oh God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you set in place the beginnings of the universe, you formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, so that they may no longer be two but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his church. O God, by whom a woman is joined to man and the companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with the one blessing not forfeited by original sin nor washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these your servants joined together in marriage who ask to be strengthened by your blessing Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit and pour your love into their hearts that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter, Christina, and let her always follow the example of, example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband entrust his heart to her so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, may these, your servants, hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments made one in the flesh. May they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear witness, may they bear true witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children. And grant that, reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope, they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Please kneel or if you are unable, be seated. In a moment, we'll have the distribution of Holy Communion. I'll first distribute to the couple, and then we will go to stations on either side of the church where the hand sanitizer is and the table. I'd like to invite any Catholics who are unable to receive at this time or any non-Catholics just to remain seated in your pews and to continue to pray for Paul and Christina. And then for those of you who will come forward, uh, if you can follow as best you can the social distance markings that are on the floor indicated by the blue tape, and then pull down your mask, sanitize, and then receive communion and go back to your pew. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Thank you. 
Let us pray. By the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, accompany with your loving favor what in your providence you have instituted so as to make of one heart in love those you have already joined in this holy union and replenish with one bread and one chalice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With Bow down for the blessing. After each invocation, respond, amen. May God, the eternal Father, keep you of one heart in love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. amen. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity, so that the afflicted and the needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the dwelling of God. Amen. Amen. May the blessing, of, may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you Mr. and Mrs. Paul Kolova.